In this video, I'm going to describe how to create a custom card sort activity in Desmos. To create custom activities, you need an account, so you'll need to create one or else sign in to teacher.desmos.com. Once you're signed in, if this is your first custom activity, you'll need to go to the labs section, teacher.desmos.com slash labs, and make sure that the computation layer is selected. So here we see computation layer. You need to make sure that that check box is checked. Now we can go to custom and create a new activity. So I'm going to click over here in the upper right, new activity. I'm going to call this activity opposite operations and start building. So we can add a variety of components to what are called screens in a Desmos activity. The component that I want to use today is called the card sort. Choosing card sort, I can add a variety of cards. I'm just going to add some text cards that have opposite operations like add and subtract, multiply and divide, and square and take the square root. Once I have the cards I'd like, I can choose answer key and match them up the way I'd like the students to do. And when we're satisfied with that, we can go to done. And I also wanna add a title that'll give the students some direction like match the opposite operations. And we could stop there. That's an activity that students could access, um, but I'd like to add a slide that gives them some feedback on their progress. And so to do that, I'm gonna add a second screen, but I wanna be able to access the card sort. So over here toward the upper left of the card sort component, I need to give it a label. I'm gonna call it sort one. And so now I'm gonna choose new screen and I'll be able to use that label to access information from the card sort. I'm gonna give the title of this screen, check progress. And it'll include simply a note that will allow the students to see some information about the card sort. So in this note, we could type text into the panel here, but I want the text to depend on the card sort. So I'm going to use the computation layer. And to indicate that, that this isn't just an empty note, I'm going to say, see the CL script for the content. And the CL script is accessed with this little gear icon. It's gray right now, which tells us that there's nothing in the script. But I'm going to click it, and it'll open up a box, and we're going to type in some, some things that will lead to the content. I can affect the content of the note with the word content, which is a sync. And I want to follow that by a colon. And now I'm going to use a when otherwise structure to give different content messages depending on the state of the card sort. The when otherwise structure is like an if then statement. After the when keyword, I need a logic statement that can be evaluated as true or false. So this is when I'm gonna access the sort, sort one, and then if I follow that with a dot, it shows me the different sources that I can access about the card sort. And the one that I want is matches key. So this will be true if the card sort matches the key and false otherwise. So after this statement, in quotation marks, I can put content. So if it matches the key, let me say, well done. The cards are sorted correctly. Now we can see from this orange warning triangle that I need to add something more. I need the otherwise statement. Every when statement needs to be followed by an otherwise, which is the default. So if the sort one dot matches key is false, then instead of including the message after when, it'll include the message after otherwise. And here I want to give some information about how many cards are correct. So I'm going to say only and leave a couple spaces. 
only blank of the blank cards are sorted correctly. And let me add, go back and try again. So in those blanks, I want to put the number of cards that were sorted correctly and the number of total cards. To do that, I want to access information about the card sort, and I need to put that into a structure, uh, dollar sign followed by two braces, in order for Desmos to interpret that as information from the card sort and not just text. So dollar sign, and then inside two braces, I'm going to type sort one again and, and a dot. And this first one, I'm going to take total correct cards. And in the next blank, I'm going to put, again, dollar sign, two braces, and then sort one dot total cards. So what will happen is it will grab that information from the card sort, and it'll say only however many cards of the total number of cards are sorted correctly. Go back and try again. So let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to click Done, and then choose Preview. And we can see only zero of the six cards are sorted correctly. Go back and try again. So if I go back and I sort the cards, add and subtract. I can see now the message has changed to only two of the cards are sorted correctly. And if I match them all up, we can see the other message. Well done. The cards are sorted correctly. But things were a little bit awkward when nothing was sorted correctly. So let me just move things around and kind of have a, an incorrect arrangement in a slightly different way, and we see that first message, only zero of the cards are sorted correctly, and grammatically that's just kind of awkward. So let me use this as an opportunity to show that in a when otherwise statement, we can have more than one when condition. So I'd like to add a second when condition, but this time it's going to be based on the total number of cards, so when and then sort one dot total number of cards to make that an if then I want to see if that's equal to zero I want a special message so if the total number of correct cards is equal to zero I want the message to say none of the and now I'm going to use dollar sign and braces to enter the total number of cards again none of the total cards are sorted correctly. So this way, what happens with a when otherwise statement, it'll check the first logic condition, and if that's met, it'll just do that thing and ignore the rest. But if that's false, it'll go on to the second one and see if that's correct. So we know at this point that the key is not matched, and we can check whether there are zero cards correct. And if that's true, it'll print this message. And let me add that word of encouragement, uh, go back and try again. Of course, if there's something done correctly, then it'll show the third otherwise message. But it won't reach that otherwise message if one of the when conditions was actually true. So let's take one more look at our activity. And this time, we see none of the six cards are sorted correctly. Go back and try again. If I match up, subtract, and add, I can see that only two of the cards were sorted correctly, so the, the another option. And if I match up, take the square and square, if I match up everything correctly, we'll see the third message. So I'm pretty happy with this activity. I'd like to move on. So if I go up to and click Next, I can choose to publish the activity. I could also choose to save the draft if I wanted to come back and work on it some more before making it a published activity. Clicking Publish takes me to the view of the activity where I can create a class code. I can also share the activity, a link to the activity with other teachers, and it'll be among our list of custom activities. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.